The most common site of all mandibular fractures is the condylar or subcondylar region, where 9% to 45% of mandibular fractures occur. The etiology of subcondylar fractures mirrors that of most facial trauma. The most common causes of subcondylar 3 fractures of the mandible are motor vehicle accidents, interpersonal violence, work-related incidents, sporting accidents, and falls. Subcondylar fractures of the mandible are defined as fractures below the level of the most inferior point on the sigmoid notch. Depending on the circumstances, condylar neck fractures may be treated as subcondylar fractures. Classification according to the McLennan system. Type 1 fracture, non-displaced. Type 2 fracture, deviated. Angulation without overlap or separation. Greenstick fractures are included in this category. Type 3 fracture, displaced. This fracture displays overlap between the proximal and distal segments. Type 4 fracture, dislocated. The condylar head leaves the capsule and lies outside the glenoid fossa. How to diagnose? First through history and mode of trauma. Second through clinical examination which shows localized pain and swelling in the region of TMJ. Limitation of mouth opening. Deviation of mandible to the involved side. Posterior open bite on the contralateral side. Blood in ear. Pain on palpation. Lack of condylar movement on palpation. Anterior open bite with bilateral subcondylar fractures and difficulty in lateral excursion as well as protrusion. Third through radiographic examination. Management options, conservative treatment, closed reduction and MMF. Surgical treatment, open reduction and internal fixation. Steps for open reduction and internal fixation of caudalar fracture. Mark the retromandibular incision extending from the ear lobe behind the angle and parallel to the posterior mandible. Incision of skin and subcutaneous tissue to expose parotid gland fascia. Incise the parotid fascia and exposure of parotid gland. Blunt dissection of parotid gland to identify the facial nerve. Incise through the parotid gland carefully to exp to us the masseter muscle and TMJ capsule. Incise the masseter muscle and expose the posterior border of mandible and subcaudylar fracture. Reduce the fracture to its normal position. The caudalar process usually displaced medially due to the action of lateral pterygoid muscle, so the condyle process should be manipulated with lateral override. A straight plate is bended and adapted to the fracture site. The surgeon should be aware of maxillary artery and auriculotemporal nerve when drilling the proximal screw holes. Rotate the angle inferiorly and symphysis superiorly to restore the posterior height of the ramus. The alignment of the posterior mandible maintained during screw insertion by applying pull traction to the plate. If the reduction is not satisfactory, loosen posterior plate screw on distal segment. Secure plate and screws and closure of the incision in layers.